Good morning, friends. This is the Gospel of Joy. I am Reverend Josh Knappenberger, the pastor of laughter, and I am also the pastor at St. James UCC in Allentown, PA. You will have to uh, forgive me this morning. I am a mess. I could not find the folder for my jokes. I found them, but I found them like two seconds before I had to get online. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm a mess this morning, but I think, but my message is a bit of a mess this morning too. But we'll, um, uh, we'll just uh, <laughs> get through this today. Sometimes we just get through it. So we'll get through it. All right. So if this is your first time with the Gospel of Joy community. It is great to have you here. Welcome. And I hope you find this uplifting enough to come back tomorrow. And if it's not uplifting enough for you to come back tomorrow, I hope that you at least get enough joy to get through today. Um, you can check the, the YouTube channel, St. James UCC, Allentown, on, um, for all the videos you may have missed for buddies, for jokes, for messages. All the videos you may have missed are on the YouTube channel, so go check them out. And don't forget to tag your friends in this video. Tell your friends about this video and share this, friend, this video with your friends so that they can all feel the joy and get a, just get an uplifting sense for the day uh, because joy and laughter doesn't do very much good if nobody hears about it. Good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Michael and Marie. It's great to have you with us. Good morning, Cynthia. And good morning, Patrick. It's great to have you with us as well. Also in front of St. James, UCC on 15th Street, there is a box of books for, uh, for the community. It's a ministry we do for the community. It's a lending library. You can bring a book, bring a children's book if you want to, um, if you want to donate one. If you want to take a children's book that there, that's there, you can take one. Good morning, Edna. And I know you probably have Joni and John with you, so good morning to them, too. Uh, good morning. It's great to have you all with us. And I did not watch yesterday's, but I know that uh, our organist, James Thompson, Keith James Thompson, K. James Thompson is his Facebook name, did uh, two more hymns for you. So tune in to him at 2.30 this afternoon, and he will play two more hymns for us. And you can sing along, or you can just close your eyes and sway with the music. That's what I do. I close my eyes and I sway with the music. I don't even sing along. But, um, you know, check him out, 2.30 every afternoon, it's a very uplifting uh, offering he gives. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Fred. And good morning, Carl. It's great to have you with us as well. All right, I got my buddies with me. Uh, I'm going to do, for the next couple days, Optimus Prime and Megatron combinations. So um, this is Optimus Prime from Transformers The Last Night. Uh, the second to last Transformers movie that was made. He's got a big sword here. Uh, he he looks like a knight. He's dressed like a knight. He's got this in front, uh, which knights wear, and he looks like he's wearing armor. So, yeah. Um, this is Optimus Prime from The Last Knight, and this is Megatron from The Last Knight. He's got a flame effect coming out of his cannon. He's got a sword there, too, and they're ready to to do battle if they were facing each other. Now, there's something cool about Megatron I want to show you all. He's got a mean face. Mean, nasty face, but he's got a battle mask that can cover it up. So uh, he's, yeah, he, he's pretty cool. He's got a cool effect. He transforms into a plane, and he, of course, transforms into a, a red and blue truck, Optimus Prime, red and blue truck. That, that, that's what he transforms into. Good morning, Carol. It's great to have you with us, too. Always great to have you with us. Okay. Now,
before we read the Bible scripture, I'll let you get your get your Bibles if you don't have them. Uh, the Bible verse we are looking at is Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 to 7. And while you're getting your Bible and the verse up, Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 to 7, uh, I'm going to read a joke to you. All right. A church had a man in, a choir, in the choir who couldn't sing. Several people hinted to him that he could serve in other places, but he continued to come to the choir. The choir director became desperate and went to the pastor. You've got to get that man out of the choir, he said. If you don't, I'm going to resign. The choir members are going to quit too. Please do something. So the pastor went to the man and suggested, perhaps you should leave the choir. Why should I get out of the choir, he asked. Well, five or six people have told me you can't sing. That's nothing, the man snorted. Fifty people have told me that you can't preach. <laughs> that one's pretty good. All right. On to the scripture verse for today. Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 to 7, and you can read along with me. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, of vipers, how can you speak good things when you do evil things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person brings good things out of a, tre out of a good treasure, and the evil person brings evil things out of an evil treasure. I tell you, on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. I have to give a disclaimer about my message this morning. This is the gospel of joy, and we're about, about joy and laughter, but this message doesn't have much joy or laughter in it um and one day i will be judged by uh by the fruit of my words but um it's something that i think needs to be said all right in jesus's time the way to worship god as a good jew was to live the letter the law to the letter boast about it in congregation in the synagogues and looked down on those who weren't Jewish and didn't worship in the synagogues. And in that world, Jesus saw a need to be Jewish in a different way. He preached against the Jewish leaders of the time. He said, be humble before God. He said, if somebody needs healing, I don't care if I'm breaking the law of God to do it. I, he fundamentally changed the way people thought and believed about God's expectations of us. I feel as though we live in a similar situation right now. Out of necessity, we've, adap we've adapted the ways we worship and come to God, and these ways are not perfect. They're online. We're not with each other in presence, but we still have community. We don't get to see our church family as often as we like. But our, adaptive, our adaptions, for the most part, have been effective and for the good, I think. We've learned how to do church and worship over the internet, as we're doing this morning. We've learned the importance of reaching out to the members over the phone who don't have the internet and don't have computers. We have fundamentally adapted to the needs of our time. Now, I'm not going to get political, secular political anyway, but the nationwide changing of the status of churches to essential services happened this week. President Trump changed the status of church services to essential. Some people are happy about this. Others are upset about it. But to be honest, I don't understand the upsetness. I personally agree with some of the, the people who are upset that Trump's, uh, the president's um, presidential order is reckless. But the secular leadership of our country has done nothing but put the burden of decision onto the denomination and the congregation to make the decision that is right for them. 
He hasn't said you have to go back to church. He just says you can go back to church. And as such, responsibility falls on the denominations and the congregations. The consequences of those decisions also fall on the denominations and the congregations. And this is the way of the United Church of Christ. We are congregational. Catholics and Methodists, they aren't congregational. Okay, and I'm not saying anything against them. It's the way they do their church and the way it works for them. But in in Catholicism, the Pope says something and the bishops say something and the churches have to have to act that way. In the United Church of Christ, we are not a top down hierarchy. We're very much a bottom up, which means the congregations and the pastors and the churches make the decisions that are right for them. In any time. We are congregational, and as I said, we believe each church should decide its own fate. And in these decisions, we call on the one who changed the world in his own time. We call on Jesus to guide our discernment. The question is not, is our secular leadership right? That's shifting responsibility and blame. The question is, what is right for our congregation? Jesus criticized the religious leaders of his day, and we must also not be afraid to do the same. Now, we look to Jesus to guide our discernment, but we look to our denominational leadership to provide us with the information and tools we need to make these decisions. We don't look to our denominational leadership to play political games. Now, righteous anger is a real thing, but we are not talking about a house of God in which merchants are price gouging. And I have to be honest with you all, this sermon, this message is a reaction of, of me from based on the reaction of our national leadership, the UCC's national leadership. And I don't know if my anger right now is justified or not, but I do know we do not get our hope from our political leaders. Our hope does not rise and fall based on what the president says or issues a decree on. We get our hope from Jesus Christ. And our national church leaders would do well to remember that. They may not serve congregations anymore, but they are still called to be conduits for that hope. It is a hope we state every day here on the Gospel of Joy, and say it loud and proud with me, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. I have some other funnies. Now, uh... As I said, I couldn't find my joke folder until right before um, uh, right before I started the live stream. But uh, so I didn't get a chance to read all the jokes I chose. But uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll see how they turn out. This one is entitled Humor for the Hard Times. Oh, and good morning, Joni and John. It's always great to have you with us. A doctor who had a reputation for helping arthritic patients had a waiting room full of people. A little old lady completely bent over in half, shuffled slowly, leaning on her cane. When her turn came, she shuffled into the doctor's office and emerged within a half an hour, walking completely straight up, head held high. A woman in the waiting room walked up to the little old lady and exclaimed, It's a miracle! You walked in bent in half, and now you're walking erect. How did the do that doctor do that? Miracle schmiracle, the old lady replied. He gave me a longer cane. That was sent in by Reverend Harry Mahoney of Dedham, Massachusetts. 
Here's another one. I sometimes bring music to residents of nursing homes to brighten their day. One day at an Arizona facility, an assistant and I had spent 45 minutes singing hymns and sharing scripture with a large group. Each resident had a hymnal in their hands, and they had sung beautifully and from the heart. And as we were wrapping up the hour, one elderly resident raised her hand, called on her. I called on her and said tersely, well, when are we going to start? Oh, and she said tersely, well, when are we going to start? Yeah. I'm not only the pastor of laughter, I'm also the pastor of being tongue-tied. That was sent in by Reverend Deanna Cercelli of First Presbyterian Church, Sydney, Ohio. Good morning, Wendy. It's great to have you back. Jim Reed is known to have said many men play golf religiously every Sunday. And here's another one. A church. Oh, that's I already did that one. I got two in this one for you. Let's see. We have this one's entitled Desperate Praying. Worshippers at All Saints Church were invited to a special Lenten study on prayer. At the close of the course, Pastor Nixon invited the participants to write sentence prayers. Here are some of those prayers. Oh, and don't forget to comment on which joke you like the best. Here are some of those prayers. Lord, help me to relax about insignificant details. And I'm beginning, help me, beginning at 741 23 and 23 seconds a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God, help me to consider people's feelings, even if most of them are hypersensitive. Father, help me to take responsibility for my own actions, even though they're usually not my fault. Dear God, help me not to try to run everything, but if, if you need some help, feel free to ask me. Lord, help me to be more laid back and help me to do it exactly right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, please help me to take things more seriously, especially having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I need that one too. God, give me patience, and I mean right now. <laughs> Lord, help me not to be a perfectionist. Did I spell that correctly? Lord, keep me open to other people's ideas, wrong though they may be. Dear God, help me to slow down and not rush things. Not, not oh, oh, Let me say it again. Dear God, help me to slow down and not rush through what I do. Amen. And those are sentence prayers written by um, people attending a Lenten study on prayer. This one's entitled, Honest Praying. The minister is asking a little boy, so your mother says you have prayers with you every night. What does she say? The little boy responded, thank God he's in bed. Yeah. Any of us with kids can resonate with that one. All right. Let's see. I have some cartoons for us, too. If I can. Oh, here we go. All right. It's got a haggard man in a mirror. Looks like he woke up five seconds ago, and he says, I think it's probably a pastor, and he says, don't forget, God loves you. We all need that reminder when we wake up in the morning, and it's a good thing to remind ourselves of. And here's another cartoon of someone trying to enter heaven. I like these ones. Sorry, you haven't been approved by the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, yes. Okay, so... Will you pray with me and we will pray for the forgiveness of our sins that we might have communion with a clean heart. Lord God, we give you thanks for life. We give you thanks for those who you have put in this world to lead us in these times. Remind them 
including the one who is giving this prayer, that they are in place to filter and give the hope of Jesus Christ, that they are the conduits for his hope and his love through you. We also ask that you forgive our sins, forgive our righteous anger when it was not righteous. Forgive that those things that we have done that have hurt others, the things we have said. Forgive these things and help us to go forth into the world with a clean heart, showing this mercy and forgiveness to others. We ask these things in your name. Amen. As we do every Sunday, we will now share in communion. Be sure to get your bread and your juice, or your wine if you have some, and we will share in communion. And as you get your bread and your juice, I'm going to pick another, another joke to tell. I didn't plan on picking another joke to tell, but uh, all right, here we go. I'll I'll, t I'll tell tell a couple of them. This one's under the head heading: Kids say and do the funniest things. Reverend Richard Rush, a friend of Reverend Harry Mahoney of Dedham, Massachusetts, passed on these comments on angels as explained by children. Gregory, age five, says. I only know the names of two angels, Hark and Harold. Mitchell, age seven, says, Angels work for God and watch over kids when God has to go do something else. Sarah, age seven, says, What I don't get about angels is why when someone is in love, they shoot arrows at them. Henry, age eight, says, My guardian angel helped helps me with math, math, but he's not much good for science. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Vicky, age eight, says, some of the angels are in charge of helping sick anim heal sick animals and pets. And if they don't make the animals get better, they help the children get over it. Now, it's a direct quote. I would change it. Uh, to they help the children heal from it. But it's an eight-year-old. I think he's got the right idea. I think he's got, I think she's got the right, she's got the right idea. She's got the right idea there. Okay. We are going to have communion, and I invite anyone who professes Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to Join us in our communion this morning. Anyone is welcome at this table who professes Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior and understands the, um, uh, the unifying nature and the, um, the love and hope that is given through the sacrament. I love showing you my communion kit. I, only, I have another one, but this is the, mo the prettiest one that I have. My bread. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love, which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name, 
holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember, O God, that on the night of betrayal and desertion, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave, the, gave it to the disciples, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, wherever they may be, and bless us, that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise, and we may feel the unity of Christ with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. And I invite you to break your bread with me. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has risen. And Jesus Christ will come again. Come, for all things have been made ready. This is the body of Christ, and it has been broken, that we may find our wholeness in it. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ, and it has been poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Take and drink. Amen. Let us pray in thanksgiving for what we've received, and we will end with the prayer of our Savior. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we have known the presence of Christ and have received all of Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray when we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again. Don't forget, keep safe, keep healthy, and keep laughing. Don't forget to do one thing every day that gives you joy. No matter what that one thing is, do it. And if there is something that you are struggling with, don't be afraid to tell me in the comments in a private message or um, 
if you have my phone number, you can text me with it so that I can address it uh, in in the context of the hope of Christ. I try to try to address things that we're all feeling, and the more things I know about, the more I can uh, the more I can address, and the rich the more rich this um, this daily live stream can be. I think. Also, don't forget. James will be playing again at 2.30 this afternoon. So if you want to hear a hymn or two, just uh, go to his live stream and, uh, you know, listen to the music, sing along, sway back and forth, do whatever you want, but go and watch and listen to him. He is a wonderful musician. He gives a great offering every day, and we should be thankful for it, and we should go watch him. Uh, and I am here at 10.30 a.m. every morning for the duration of this stay-at-home order. So I will see you tomorrow. God bless. May God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. See you tomorrow. God bless.